And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Live Viviana live stream. And tonight's topic is delivery manager versus delivery lead. Same job, different name. So today is a special live stream. We have a panel discussion. So I have three guests today instead of just one. So thank you so much for finding some time this evening to join our live discussion. Please make sure, introduce yourselves in the comments. Let us know what you do and join our conversation with your comments and questions. Please make sure to say hi. We want to know who's here with us today. So, you know, it's not really nice to speak with the crickets. So make sure to comment below with your name and uh, uh, tell us where you're watching us from. So if you're new to uh, my live stream, I'm Jana Martins, and I've recently started my journey as an IT recruiter. So hence, I've started this new YouTube channel dedicated to IT career in Australia. So tonight, we're going to talk about yeah, delivery managers versus delivery leads. And uh, Kathy, Jason, and Raz going to share their experience when it comes to defining those roles. So before I'll pass it over to my guest speakers to introduce themselves, just want to quickly remind you that we're going live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And to watch the replays, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, IT Career in Australia. I'm going live there every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Melbourne time with various experts from my network. And we're talking about all things around IT career, job search, and specifics of IT industry in Australia. So you can also join the Meetup group to make sure you get notifications for upcoming discussions. Uh, and please comment with your questions. So we will try to answer all your questions from all the platform. Please make sure stay on the topic. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about delivery managers and delivery sleep today. Um, and, you know, some active participants might even get some nice surprise at the end of stream. So that's enough of, I guess, me talking. Um, or it is... Um, joining us today. Hi, Orit. Hi, everyone. Interesting topic. So please contribute in our discussion as well. And so basically, just passing on firstly to Jason to introduce himself. Please. Uh, hi, Yana. Thank you. Um, and thanks for the invitation to come along and welcome everyone who's uh, joined this uh, live stream. Uh, my name is Jason Van Lint. I am currently uh, head of delivery at Flybys. Flybys is a, a loyalty company here in Australia. Um, and uh, before that, I used to be uh, a delivery manager at realestate.com.au. And before that, I was a delivery lead at realestate.com.au for about three to four years. Um, currently, in my role ahead of delivery, I'm, I'm responsible for a bunch of teams at Flybys that basically build custom software for the organization to do the things that we need to do for our customers and our members. Thank you, Jason. Um, and please, Russ, so what about you? Oh, thank you, Jana. And thank you for having me along. Uh, and welcome to all our viewers. And uh, thank you for giving up some of your time this evening. Uh, hopefully, you will enjoy the discussion. Uh, my name is Ruslan Alexanitsa, but I just go by Russ. I'm a lean agile coach and delivery practice lead for Industry & Co. Uh, we are a fintech uh, cloud-based software development company. And, you know, you might have heard of brands like Athena Home Loans. Uh, we basically built their uh, systems from scratch. We uh, also work in uh, other industries as well uh, as finance. So uh, telco, government, uh, we do large pieces of work with uh, infrastructure and government organizations. Uh, I've been a lean agile practitioner for uh, over 10 years now. Uh, and prior to that, I was a project manager. So I was delivering large enterprise uh, software rollouts and ERP transformations uh, across uh, telco, banking and government. Uh, most recently, I also teach the scaled agile framework. So I teach SAFE. Uh, and that's been a long-standing passion of mine, as well as systems thinking. So looking at the whole life cycle and end-to-end -end relationships, uh, both people, process, and technology. So uh, really uh, honored to be part of this panel, and thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Ruslan, for joining us. And uh, Karthik, our returning guest this today. 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Yana, for uh, having me back on the show. And uh, thanks to all the viewers who have uh, tuned in. I can already see a lot of comments. Uh, myself, uh, Karthik, uh, I think uh, you've seen me on this channel a few times uh, in the past. Uh, I, in my new role currently, uh, I manage the development practice for Guild Group. Uh, we are an insurance business. Uh, but before that, uh, of course, uh, I've spent about 16 years in the IT industry, uh, having played various roles um, in at the development side and also in project and program management. And in my previous role uh, as a delivery manager in a, a, a small to medium uh, organization. Uh, and I think uh, playing that role uh, was a, a learning experience. And that is how, uh, you know, Yana and I uh, started talking about this term delivery and, and how uh, it has morphed into so many different roles and had a discussion a few weeks back on uh, who's a delivery manager and, and what is it that they do, right? And that discussion uh, has spawned into a, a more larger discussion of uh, what exactly uh, is this delivery management uh, as a stream and, and what are the differences between uh, what a delivery manager does and what a delivery lead does. Um, uh, and here we are uh, to expand on that discussion. So I'm, I'm really glad to be here and I'm happy to participate uh, in this lively discussion. Um, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for for the introduction. We have quite a few people joining us. Really excited to see Jason in this panel. Here you go. Jason, have a few fans here joining. Um, so. Yvonne is joining hand day one. I recently introduced to my role called iteration lead, the additional more to the mix of different names for this role. Yes, yeah, so that's actually it's another role there that we didn't cover yet. Um, Tony from Melbourne here. Uh, Vinaski, I'm from Melbourne, delivery lead at RIA Group. Excited to see Jason. Oh, Jason, you must work with him before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I uh... uh... <laughs> Sunis so here as well. Greetings from Melbourne. Interesting topic for sure. I'm a delivery lead. So good, good to see us after a long time. Here you go. So guys, you have a few fans here. So perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like I should be inviting my family in here to see that I actually have fans, right? Look, <laughs> <laughs> popular. Look. Perfect. Some, you know, some people, some people uh, do it sometimes, you know. But look, let's yeah. let's dig into the topic. So. Uh, in the beginning, I would like you like share with us what you actually currently doing in your role and what would be like your description of your current role and responsibility. And uh, I guess uh, we, we start uh, we start with Russ. Russ even prepare like a nice video for us for this one. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone again. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to apologize for my background. Uh, I would love to say this is virtual and my place actually looks like a display home, but it's the opposite way around. Uh, I've, I look, my uh, parenting engine check light is on empty. I'm over the lockdown as many of you are. And I'm just, uh, I've given up on saying no to the kids or telling them off or asking them to pack up or anything like that. So I've, I've two very active children and, uh, they've run amok. And this is my world at the moment. Uh, so uh, I'm sure half of the Melbourne can relate to you at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'm not the only one, and I'm not complaining. I love, I love my uh, kidlets dearly. Uh, so, what do I do in my role? I, I have I have a number of facets. Uh, so, part of my role is a people lead. I I have a, a team of five very talented uh, business analysts and scrum masters and i mentor and lead them in their various clients they're out of, they're out of different clients and uh, some of them are in their own right their own delivery leads however mm -hmm. i'm not I, i'm i'm a i'm a manager of them but i'm not a manager of their work and so i don't manage their day-to-day -day responsibilities i'm there more to motivate and inspire uh, them to do great stuff every day. Uh, the other facet of my role is I'm a lean agile coach. So I'm, I'm a practitioner of my own craft. I teach, uh, agile at scale and safe, and I also, uh, help organizations transform their enterprises. So I work right up there with the portfolio level and the C-suite 
and uh, discuss with them what the digital strategy means in terms of an actual roadmap to reality. And so uh, this uh, brings me to my third uh, facet, which is I work in a professional services firm. So the work that we do inherently is influential in nature. So I'm a consultant. I do not manage the client. I do not tell the client what to do. I sometimes want to, uh, but that's not the reality. I, I advise. So I'm an advisor. I'm a consultant. And uh, by that definition, I can lead the horse to water, but I can't make it drink. And so there's a little video that I'd like to share, which really summarizes my day-to-day -day life in terms of herding the cats. There you go. Let me put it on for you guys. This man right here is my great grandfather. He's the first cat herder in our family. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Anybody can herd cattle. Holding together 10,000 half wild short hairs. Oh, that's another thing altogether. Being a cat herder is probably about the toughest thing I think I've ever done. I got this one this morning right here. And if you look at his face, it's it just ripped to shreds, you know? You see the movies, you, you hear the stories. It's, I'm living a dream. Not everyone can do what we do. I wouldn't do nothing else. It ain't an easy job, but when you bring a herd into town and you ain't lost a one of them, ain't a feeling like it in the world. EDS, managing the complexities of the digital economy. So essentially, uh, what I do is bring stakeholders together, get them to agree on what the strategy is, and bring that strategy to reality using people, processes, and technology. And what about cats? Oh, I, love, I love cats. It's the, it's, the <laughs> hardest job, it's the hardest job I've ever had to do. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ross. So, Jason, over to you. Like, can you please let us know a bit what, what you do and what is your responsibilities um, as a delivery lead? Uh, sure. So, you know, I guess as a delivery lead there are several responsibilities but i think the, the one that sort of comes to mind at the moment is is i'm working diligently with my my tech leadership colleagues to make flybys the most awesome place to come work at right we're trying to we're, we're building a culture around agile practices that we really want to be best in class and we want to attract people to come to so that's that's really at its core what it is i mean along the line there are things like you know of course i have to make sure that the, the stuff that does get built by our teams is built to adequate quality, has risk and security taken into account. So it's more um, building building awareness around those those types of topics for teams to think of before they just press the button and deploy stuff. Um, I'm also sort of guiding and coaching the delivery managers and delivery leads that uh, report into me. And, you know, just generally, I'm trying to make sure that... Uh, the organization is humming and it's humming in a way that we have a nice balance between bringing value to the business, but also giving people satisfying work to want to come to work every day and execute on. So that's, that's really what it is, what it is in a nutshell. Um, I must notice like um, none of your description have anything about technology at all. So, <laughs> you know, we're talking, we're talking about, you know, delivery, we're talking about it here, but, uh, was nothing about you know technology part in uh, you, you know in any of your positions. So I guess um, let's let's um, come back to you know our main topic today. Uh, you know delivery lead versus delivery manager. So um, I guess um, Jason, like I would like to uh, ask you first, like what's what's in a nutshell? What's the difference between um, delivery lead and delivery manager, is it the same job and it's just a different name or is actually it's a different role um, altogether? Yeah, it's a really, it's a really interesting question. And look, I, all I can do is share um, some of my experiences on how I've seen it work before and why I think it's great. Um, I think they are very much distinct roles. I think a delivery lead is very much focused on an immediate team or teams for which they're responsible and making sure that the um, things being 
being delivered by the team are meeting business expectations in terms of quality and value and those sorts of things. And I think a manager probably is um, someone who's more uh, aligned to a bunch of teams um, and takes care of them. I, I prepared some, some sort of documentation. I think when an organization gets to any kind of reasonable size and complexity, um, they start to divide themselves into into areas or lines of business, right? And I've just given a trivial example here. You've probably, if you're a digital marketing company, like for example, realestate.com, uh, you'll have customers uh, who pay for subscriptions and you have consumers that come to your website. Um, and in that slide, you can see you probably start to have uh, different teams in the working on different pieces of work to push objective key results. I put some samples up on there. Um, this by no means represents a perfect view. I mean, Yana did ask me, do you think every team should have a DL? Well, it depends on the size. Um, I would think if you've got just teams of five, you could probably manage two. But if you have teams of 11 there, and that's what the five to 11 is, the kind of ideal agile team size, that, that would get a bit much. But let's just say for the argument, for just for this, uh, this uh, intellectual exercise, you've got teams of, of 11 people. Each one has a, a product owner and a delivery lead. Uh, and they're all executing on on objective key results. So where does the DM fit in? Well, a DM um, would typically work alongside a product manager, and they would be um, ensuring that collectively teams are delivering in on the objective key results. While each team might be working on individual pieces of work, there there needs to be someone who helps orchestrate all these pieces of work and prioritizes them in a way that they meet the objective key results. Also, a delivery manager would have responsibilities of, and, and Russ touched on it before, who is making sure that disaster recovery is executing? Who is making sure that we have a disaster recovery plan and that it's, it's, it's up to date? Uh, who's making sure that you know, security concerns are being uh, addressed at every team? So there is this kind of role that a delivery manager plays, which is not just coach for DLs or... Um, a vision of, of what uh, the delivery uh, methodology should be or how people should be delivering work. They also have this role in maintaining budgets, in main, managing people's careers, in making sure that resources are hired in such a way that they can be moved throughout. People can be hired so they can move throughout the organization, right? Not just for one team and that's it. So it, it's, it's kind of a broader perspective um, in my opinion. And, you know, delivery leads... They, they have, if they're great, they have this very, very fixated view on fixing that, uh, on, on concentrating on their team and taking care of their team and shepherding their team and unblocking their team. And it's a full-time job. And because they're doing that, sometimes they lack the broader, the broader picture. Um, and finally, uh, Yana, you see that this is, yeah, the DM and, and uh, product manager is probably across several teams. Sometimes they can even stretch into these horizontal platform teams as well. So they may have responsibilities for a LOB plus a couple of platform teams that are related to what the LOB does. Um, so, you know, I, I, it, it can, it, I think this, this person can be called many different things in different organizations, but traditionally, as I've known them, you have delivery leads taking care of team, a team or teams at a very macro everyday level. And then you've got uh, delivery managers who are a bit more, uh, uh, have a wider perspective and are taking care of some of the things that would distract delivery leads and teams from everyday delivery of their work. Yeah, um, yeah that's, that, that, this um, is my experience. I, I think these delivery managers can be called many different things, but I've known them as delivery leads. And I think uh, the team leaders I've known them as deliver uh, sorry delivery managers and the, the leaders the team leads are delivery leads. Um, I think delivery leads, there's different terms for them too. Iteration leads, um, uh, scrum masters. Maybe a del delivery lead is probably a scum scrum master plus. They probably have a little bit more responsibility than just taking care of yeah, every day. The, the delivery mm -hmm. lead would face like more out of the team, while a scrum master faces more into the team. More. Yeah, there we go, Russ. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and um, I guess um, I want to pass it to Russ to see, like, you know, like, uh, are you kind of agree with, like, a JSON model and anything that you would like to add? But before before you say this, I want to ask audience as well. We had, like, a few delivery leads um, joining us. So while Russ is expressing, you know, like, his comments, 
please also we would like to hear your opinion guys like if someone here uh, watching us and in the delivery or delivery manager delivery lead or delivery manager position please uh, share with us if it's the same structure in your organization um, so over to you, Russ. So what, what's, um, what is your definition? What's the difference for you between delivery lead and delivery manager? Sure. Well, I really like Jason's uh, infographic and the way it showed uh, both uh, responsibilities of a delivery manager across teams and across shared services as well. So it's really a matrix type role rather than a team-based role. Uh, the delivery manager would also face out into vendors and some organizations call them delivery orchestration managers uh, because they have to go away and conduct the orchestra uh, that is a complex IT program or team of teams. So they really do sit in that team of teams program slash portfolio responsibility, whilst the delivery lead will mostly have team responsibilities. And depending on the size, they might have multiple team responsibilities. Uh, also, um, the term manager is also very interesting. So I'd like to spend a bit of time on that uh to earn the title of manager within an organization it means you have a uh, fiduciary responsibility for the system so you are accountable for budgets you are accountable for cost centers uh you are accountable for billing accounts receivable uh you are accountable for debt uh you are accountable for compliance and security and risk and that management stewardship means that uh, you face out into the enterprise mm. and you are a responsible steward or manager for the system that your team works in. Mm. And so uh, I'd like to add to, to Jason's point that the manager is also the delivery manager is also responsible for fine tuning the system of work. So the environment the technology. So we, Jana mentioned we haven't talked about technology. Well, now we do. Are there standard tools and practices that uh, the teams must adhere to? Are they all using Jira or are they using Rally? Uh, what is their uh, program management tool? Are they on Clarity? Are they on uh, uh, Plan View? Um, just to mention a few things, or are they on Excel? You know, Microsoft, you can send me the check later. Um, you know, what, 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 uh, what, what are the standard tools and practices? And the manager is responsible for ensuring that everyone has access, everyone's got the right environments, everyone is uh, able to do their best work, show up every day, be their best selves in the best system possible. And if there's issues with the system, the manager must know what to do. All right, and they're the escalation point whilst the delivery lead is more about coaching and mentoring rather than managing. Um, and I guess, you know, um, Kafik, we had this conversation with you, um, you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, so now we have, you know, more people to discuss it. So how do you feel now, you know, about our previous discussion and what sort of, uh, you know, clar uh, clarification questions would you like to ask to Russ and Jason? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, first of all, you know, Jason and Russ, you you brought about some fantastic points there, right? Like uh, from, from Jason's perspective, how an organization should be structured to cover the verticals in terms of teams and the horizontals as well, right? And Russ, you talked about the, the inward focused and, you know, um, external focus. Delivery lead was a scrum master. So those are great insights. Uh, but I guess uh, I want to kind of pivot into organization, right, and, and, and maturity of an organization from an agile standpoint. Um, so some of my previous experiences, obviously, I've worked in large corporate organizations, which uh, has a lot of bifurcations uh, uh, in, in terms of, you know, who does what and, and, and clearly defined roles. And I've also been part of uh, setups where you're basically the editor, right? So you, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the scrum master, you're leading the team, you're coaching the team, you're mentoring them, you're also uh, you know, trying to align organizational goals to uh, you know, the outcomes that the team needs to achieve. Uh, and, and often, I guess, uh, such organizations don't have the luxury to bifurcate the roles. Um, and, and in that sense, I, I want to understand why is it that people get inclined towards the term manager uh, was a lead, right? So going back to our original question, 
is should we even have that difference? Uh, because you know when we talk about you know managers, uh, is it just line management, people management, or is it there 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 is an inclination to call you know as though manager is a as a higher level or 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 better. I would say a uh, better term to use uh, than a lead. So I always grapple with that question, right? What, why people get fixated to calling something, you know, uh, uh, as a, at a managerial level when the, the work that you're doing is probably more at the lead level, right? So maybe one of you can. I, I'm, I'm happy to jump in first if you don't mind, Jason. Go ahead. So uh, there has to be someone who is the steward. Mm -hmm. Right. So the CEO can't do everything, even if uh, it's a founder's company and the owner is the one who founded the company. They still can't do everything. Someone's got to do HR. Someone's got to do recruitment. Someone's got to do delivery. Someone's got to do engineering. You know, there's quality stuff to manage security, compliance, regs, regulations. There's always stuff to do. And the system, if left to its own devices, will become selfish. So HR will just recruit. Finance will just budget. Uh, operations will just run. Uh, development will just build more stuff, right? So each each function will become selfish and will just be the best at what it what it does. You need someone to orchestrate and to manage and to be the steward of the whole end to end system to make sure that the system runs efficiently. So you want a system that's sprinting, not a whole bunch of people sprinting around in different directions. So we're not looking for managers to manage people. Uh, we are all knowledge workers. We can all manage ourselves. In fact, uh, most knowledge workers on this call will be motivated by three things, autonomy, mastery, and, and, and purpose. Right? None of those three things call out for a manager. Uh, so uh, if you feel demotivated because you're being managed, then that makes complete sense. Right? So, so you should. Um, managers shouldn't be trying to manage you. They should be managing the system around you so that the system is sprinting. Uh, and so that's why the uh, um, way the organization works is it creates a manager role mm -hmm. because that role is a steward. Whilst a leadership role, uh, you can be a leader, but you may not be given anything to manage. So you can be a people lead. You can be a practice lead. Like I'm a practice lead and I'm a people lead, uh, but I don't manage any systems. And so to me, that's the clear delineation uh, between uh, a delivery lead and a delivery manager. Yeah, uh, back to Jason, I guess. So yeah, yeah, I don't have much to add. I think Russ was a very good answer on Russ's behalf. The, the only thing I would I would add is that perhaps there is also a component of managing the work as well. If mastery, autonomy, and and those sorts of things are important to teams, it's also important that the delivery manager works alongside the product manager to ensure that the right types of work get delivered to the teams as well. And they're not pre-cooked and predefined, right? Mm -hmm. that, um, that teams have the opportunity to, to solution these things themselves within the guardrails that are set by architects and, and, and lead people. But, but there is uh, an element of shaping the work. There's also an element of generating the work as well. I mean, there are when teams are involved in in delivering uh, features and and new ideas in their products, they're often not concerned with some of the problems that legacy systems can be creating for the organization or or other health issues. And so, often delivery manager are also asked to put together business cases for you know, the remediation of certain pieces of work, which which can end up being quite expensive and justify um, investment and some return on that investment as well. So it's up to delivery managers to work alongside the PM to put forward the business cases for those types of work. So there's also a bit of work shaping as well as uh, the system custodianship that Russ was um, referring to. Um, definitely, we do have a few comments coming in, uh, guys. So, uh, actually, for our audience, so don't be shy. You can ask the questions. So, we still have time to uh, answer a few questions. Um, already saying, yeah, manage the works, uh, not the workers. Um, yeah. Right information, yeah, right amount, and right time. Um, and um, I love the comment from Alexandra because it's kind of the question that I wanted to ask today as well. 
because <laughs> she's saying, and where is also a lead delivery manager? Funny enough, uh, as I work in the recruitment, we currently actually recruiting a lead delivery manager. So if anyone wants a job, <laughs> you can contact me. But um, bef uh, before you contact me about this job, I just kind of want to understand who is a lead delivery manager in this case, if we have a uh, you know, delivery lead and um, delivery manager. So does we just put them two together and uh, get the lead delivery manager? So what's, what's happened well, there? So what, what I, do you I guys think? That, I, I see that as a, a director level role. So uh, multiple delivery managers will have many delivery leads and a lead delivery manager or a, or a delivery practice director uh, or a lead delivery uh, management function would be like a PMO for delivery managers. And that will be the central person yeah. that all the delivery managers report to. What do you think, Jason? Uh, I might be a little bit more controversial than that. <laughs> it feels to me like, look, I think one of the traps that we can fall into, it, and this this um, uh, this kind of reflects on what Kartik was saying, is that when, when manager is in that title, you can get more people in the door, right? It's more it's a more attractive title to have manager than just lead. And I think what organizations can fall into the trap is everybody to hire. Um, as a delivery lead, they call delivery manager, and then all of a sudden they need somebody else to help corral the, you know, all the delivery managers together. And they're like, well, what do we call that? Maybe lead delivery manager, maybe? Is that what she do? I mean, you know, I guess, I guess when you look at that definition, I'm a lead delivery manager, even though my title is head of delivery. I mean, I, that, that, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm, I'm helping um, my delivery managers shape the organization in a way that's good for us. Um, yeah. but I, I feel like it's probably, you're painting yourself into a bit of a corner there, you know, with, with lead delivery. It's because then what comes after that lead, lead delivery manager, lead, <laughs> lead delivery, big boss, scrum master manager yeah, of everything. Pan, pan galactic lead delivery. Pan galactic manager, overlord. Manager. <laughs> yeah. Just, so just come I, work for us. We give you some money and some responsibilities and the manager title. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and that's, that, you know, that goes back to my question, though, right? Uh, because I think, you know, the, the maturity of an organization and probably also the size uh, matters a lot because, you know, if, if, if the entire organization is just, say, 20 or 25 odd people, uh, you're probably going to have one product team, right? Um, so you're essentially going to have this one person playing multiple roles, like, you know, that of a delivery manager looking at the more external uh, relationships uh, with the stakeholders and also looking inward and also playing maybe the role of a scrum master and also championing agile, right? So, yeah. and that, yeah. I, you see I, I, I think you're yeah. right, Kartik. Yeah. I, I think people need to challenge, organizations need to challenge themselves and ask themselves, are they really looking for somebody who's leading a team or are they doing what, what Russ was talking to before, which is yeah. are they looking for somebody who's managing and custodying the process to make sure mm -hmm. that these silos don't, be, don't become selfish, right? Because in that right. case, you probably are looking for somebody who's playing a management role and not necessarily a leadership role, although I think by extension it happens, but you're not really being hired for the leadership, you're being hired for the management. If you've got both, great. Um, right. But I, I really like the way Russ described it, right? I mean, you need to be, the title should reflect the type of work you're doing. And then I think delivering manager should be somebody focused on on that system of work and, mm -hmm. and broader topics. And if you're leading a team, you should probably have lead in the title, not necessarily manager. Right, right. Um, lead delivery cosmologist. Um, that's a suggestion for another title. So, <laughs> lead delivery uh, is more excellent. Yes. So we have another very, question very from guide, Andrew. Guardians of the Galaxy Star Lord. <laughs> I like we this question. Yeah. Question from Andrew: Who would pay rise discussion at QB if Ava or only with the manager? Uh, who would yeah. like to answer this question? Uh, I, I can jump in with this one. I, I, look, I, I think that your your people leader should be the person that you would have this discussion with. So if, you, if you're in a team and you have a delivery lead, you would have that discussion with the delivery lead. Where the ma delivery manager comes in is 
is the delivery lead comes in and does a sense check with them, right? Because I, mm. I might, as a delivery manager, have a greater feel for how the pay is structured across the whole division. So I know whether or not this is an unreasonable ask for the organization to fulfill or a reasonable one. And, you know, um, and I can also uh, get a sense of how that person's performance weighs up against some of the other people in the organization as well. So it's more just a sense check around, do we have the budget? Does it make, is it gonna cause uh, problems with other people? But I, I very much encourage delivery leads to have those discussions um, with their team members. What do you think, what do you think Russ? Dude. Yeah, it should be your people lead. So whoever you actually organizationally report to, that should be the person. Now, if the delivery lead is the person you organizationally report to, fine, okay. But typically it's not. So say you're a business analyst, you probably report to the head of business analysis, right? Or you're an engineer, you probably report to head of engineering. So you should be having that discussion with, with your uh, responsible people lead. Yeah. And, and that's where line management is different from delivery management, right? So this line management is different from management. delivery management. Yeah. Line management is very different from delivery management. And also pay rise discussions are very different from day-to-day -day work discussions. So you might mm -hmm. work for the delivery lead on your day-to-day -day work, all right? Yeah. But uh, you, you're not having performance discussions with your delivery lead. So why would you suddenly bring up pay? Yeah. All right, you know, you should, you should, you should, this should be in a context. So you should be talking about your performance. You should be talking about your goals, your OKRs, your objectives and key result areas. Um, mm -hmm. You should be talking about, you know, how you're meeting those goals, how, how you're achieving, how you're contributing to the organization. And then, by the way, uh, I see that in comparable roles elsewhere, the market is paying more. I would like to be considered for blah, 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 right? Uh, and that's not a, you know, out of the blue, hey, did, wasn't that a great go live? How about a pay rise? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not how the world works. And, and this is this is where your people experience teams can help out too. I know we had a wonderful team at REA and we've got an awesome team at Flybys as well. And they, they can really um, help delivery leads um, navigate through those discussions as well. Traffic, would you like to add anything? Well, uh, I was going to kind of pivot into, uh, uh, you know, the, the question that's probably of interest to you as well, Yana, uh, is so now we've talked about delivery managers, delivery leads and, and organizational size and, and what they should be going for. Uh, so let's talk about a position description, right? So if, if somebody writes a position description for, say, a delivery lead versus a delivery manager, I often notice that, you know, look, they would probably bifurcate all of these roles very well, but but then there is an ultimately clause which says ultimately it's your ability to roll up your sleeves and get to work and get stuff done, you know. So I, I, and again, I, I look at it and always have a chuckle because you know how can one person just get it done? But then almost always uh, organizations seem to like rely on this one person to come and be this, you know, a uh, silver bullet to solve all problems, right? Uh, so so what are some of the things that I, I reckon you would recommend uh, that companies should avoid uh, in a position description? We've already touched upon the things that they should call out, right? Who would like to go first? Russ. Avoid, 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 avoid. <laughs> Avoid, avoid putting salary expectations in, right? So when you're doing a position description, it's not about the money. Mm -hmm. uh, avoid putting rankings, you know, like, oh, we've got an organization that goes from one to 13 and uh, 13 is the highest and this is ranked six, right? You know, avoid, avoid that sort of stuff. Um, what is important though is a uh, number of direct reports. You know, am I going to have direct report uh, line management responsibilities. Um, how many stakeholders uh, do I need to manage? I love job descriptions or or pro or, or, or role briefs or role mandates that have a uh, stakeholder matrix in there. Now, I don't need to know the names of the people in the organization because I might not take the job, but at least the roles. You know, am I dealing with GMs? Am I dealing with C-level executives? Am I operating at the portfolio enterprise level? You know, what 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 who am I dealing with? Um, and I find that that's super valuable. Uh, also, if there's 
uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a real uh, stickler for this, you know, oh, you've got to have 50 years of Agile experience, you know, when Agile's only been around for 20 years, um, you know, and uh, you've got to have five degrees and you've, you've got to, you know, I'm, I find that so wasteful, right? Because what you want to do is test the person's attitude and aptitude for the role. Hmm. How good are they going to be in this role? Not how experienced are they already previously? Because the experience previous has got them to where they are now. How are they going to take this moving forward? That's what I'm interested in. And so I want to know what objective and key result areas you're targeting. I want to know how is this role aligned to the strategic direction of the company? Okay, I want the meaty stuff. I don't, I don't want, you know, some, uh, it's a, uh, it's a 120k role. It's a middle manager role. You know, I don't want to know that stuff, right? I want to know the meaty stuff. I want to know that there's a there's a digital transformation strategy, and this role is pivotal in uh, facilitating the change management of the delivery practice. All right, that's that's the stuff I want to know, and then I want people who are interested in doing that stuff. Yeah. Sorry, I got a bit hey. passionate there. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Jason, uh, like, what do you think? Um, I think it's important to have vision. So you need to be somebody who's been able to demonstrate that you have vision. I think it's important that you be able to, that you can listen and therefore have, have um, uh, great people skills. Um, I would avoid talking things, language like coaching and things like that. I, I'm very much of the opinion that my role is not to, coach my dms on how to be agile practitioners right the, the sort of conversations we might have is i might i might say to them look I, I i sat in your last retro and it feels like the team doesn't really have a a great culture around self self-improvement um do you, what do you think and they might say yeah i tend to agree and i'm like well maybe we should do something about it. i'm not going to tell them how or what to do right we just sort of agree on an observation um, so I'm more sort of, and again, that speaks to what Russ is talking about manager of the, of the custodian of the process, right? Not necessarily manager of the people custodian of the process, um, and coaching people around the process and not necessarily how to be a, a better agile practitioner. Yeah. Um, so it's really around vision, listening, um, you know, uh, be bold to try new things and, and embrace that, that agile tenant of let's make mistakes it's okay to make mistakes as long as we learn from them and and move on right and and, and be better use it to be better better practitioners and better crafters of uh of what we do um so yeah, yeah I jason I, I, I love that so i love it when someone in an interview tells me about their biggest stuff up and yeah. if they haven't i'll ask right because if they can tell me what their biggest stuff up is with a big grin on their face like they learned something really amazing and they had this huge aha revelation moment. Um, I love it, right? I don't want to hear how everything they've ever touched has been gold and perfect. a success. Yeah, yeah everything yeah. is perfect, right? You know, yeah. everything er, er, everything is awesome. It's like the Lego uh, right. the Lego song, right? I get, I, get, I get scared. I get worried when I hear everything is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, no, I want to hear about their biggest stuff ups, their biggest lessons, their biggest learnings um, and how they experiment. And how they make experimentation cool and fun and okay. Right, right. Um, you know, I love that. So, guys, look, I think obviously we can talk for hours because you know there is a lot of uh, a lot of things we can touch, and you know, from here we can go to coaching and probably even go to difference between agile coach and delivery lead as well. Because uh, I think Russ, you have like them both in your title at the moment, so. I feel like, you know, it's another can of uh, ones we can open. But um, uh, let's, uh, I guess, let's try to wrap it up here because we're already in the 45 minutes mark. So um, thank you for our audience to joining us. So guys, if you have a last question, we're happy to take one more question. So if anyone kind of like jump in the next 30, second, 30 seconds and ask one more question, we'll, um, we'll run it through. But before, before we're going to wrap up our panel discussion today, I just want to quickly remind you that I'm here every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. And next Wednesday, um, 27th of October, we're going to talk with Andrew Murphy. And we're actually going to talk about starting your new job 
in IT, IT job remotely. Uh, and I think it's a massive topic as well, because there are so many of us who had to start their job remotely in the last two years. And um, I guess it's been challenging to fit in with the team, get to know the team and so on, uh, you know, how, how you go with the onboarding process. So that's something we're going to discuss next Wednesday uh, with Andrew. Um, do we have any questions? Yvonne saying yes. Um, experimentations, yes. <laughs> um, so, and um, before, guys, I will, I guess, uh, let you go and, you know, have dinner and play with your kids and <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your evening. Um, I just would like you quickly share um, your favorite inspirational quote to finish your to finish our live stream. So who want to go first? Who's uh, who already know the inspirational quote? Okay, here we go. Okay. Russ, Russ prepared. <laughs> so uh, I have an inspirational quote from Peter Drucker. And uh, he wrote a lot of management books in the 50s and 60s. It's been around for a long time. Um, and he says, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So having a learning culture and continuously improving, relent relentlessly improving, and having uh, a learner mindset, and having that as the culture of the organization is going to beat any competitor anytime. So yeah, culture uh, beats strategy, eat strategy for breakfast. Eat strategy. <laughs> Here we go. Um, Karthik, do you have yours? Sure. Uh, I'm going to go with a very simple one uh, and a cheeky one as well. I'm going to go with Nike's Just Do It uh, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, that's what organizations want people like us to do is to deliver. Uh, and this is all a great learning process, right? We, we're trying to learn from each other to do things better. And going back to the exper experimentation point, you're trying to experiment so that we can just do it. So that's what I'm going to go with. Love it, Jason, Karthik. We're, I, all, we're always learning better ways of doing things. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, I gave you enough time to think, so you should come up with the quote. Yeah, right now. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know if I have a manufactured one, but I, I mean, maybe I could maybe give a, a piece of advice that was passed on to me from uh, one of my managers at, at REA, a gentleman by the name of Dan Hawhey. Um, he once reminded me, and I think it's worth reminding because I think we forget about it very easily that when you're a delivery lead or when you're a delivery manager or even when you're head of delivery and you have these, these people who are team members underneath you, it's easy to fall into the trap to think that they're your team. And your team is actually the people that you work alongside to get things done, right? So delivery leads, your team are the other delivery leads that you work with in the organization to get things done for the organization. Um, my team are my tech LT colleagues that I work with. Um, do I care about the people that I'm the, Of course I do. And I try and engage with them as much as I can as if they're team members. At the end of the day, the team are the people that you work alongside, your peers that you're working with to get stuff done. So if you're a delivery lead or delivery manager, um, try not to lose sight of that. Um, your team is important. You're, you're in charge of taking care of them, but also remember who that your peers are also your team as well and the one that you're going to work with to get stuff done. Thank you. Thank you guys for sharing this. Um, one of our, sorry, I can't see the name for some reason, but one of the LinkedIn members sharing their quote as well. Uh, Control leads to compliance and autonomy leads to engagement yeah. by Daniel yeah, Pink. Dan Pink. Dan Pink's got yeah, some great, great quote. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So I think that's a great, um, you know, great highlight. We can finish our today discussion. So thank you so much for joining us today, guys. If you enjoy our discussion, please make sure to like this video. Come on, you know, if you get me some likes, some love, you know, it's encouraged me to keep going and keep inviting some uh, wonderful guests for my live streams. So please make sure to like and share with videos with those who need to hear this. Um, and uh, please also subscribe to my YouTube channel to make sure you get notified about upcoming events. And uh, also you can uh, catch the replays and watch and share replays there as well. Um, thank you so much, guys, for joining me tonight, you know, finding some time in your busy schedule. Or saying thanks, everyone, as well. Thank you, Orit, for joining us tonight. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And... Um, if anyone wants to add anything, just do it quickly. <laughs> no, just that you're doing a good job, Yana. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah, keep going, Yana. This is great stuff. 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks. See you, everyone. See you, everyone.